Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, Coffee Break Sessions, presented by Strategic Treasure. The show where we cover foundational topics and core treasury issues in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your cup of coffee. I'll be your host, Jonathan, media production specialist here at Strategic Treasure. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I am here with Paul Galloway for another coffee break session. Welcome back to the show, Paul. How are you doing? Doing good, John. Thanks for having me again. So we are moving away from our little series on CDs. We talked about what are callable CDs, brokered CDs, CD laddering, um, as well as just your traditional CDs. Now we're going to move into traditional debt funding structures. Paul, would you walk us through a couple of different types of funding structures? Yeah, sure thing, John. The three I want to talk about are uh, syndicated loans, senior debt, and uh, revolvers. A syndicated loan is a loan that's made by a group of banks or non-bank financials to a borrower. So non-bank financials may include insurance companies or mutual funds, pension funds, retirement plans. It's like a group of people that come together to lend to a borrower. Yeah, uh, senior debt is a loan that a company makes and must repay, you know, before any other obligation. So it's senior when you think about in the event that a company was to, let's say, go bankrupt, that's the last thing you want to have happen, uh, the pecking order in terms of who receives their funding back is uh, based on seniority. Senior debt is called senior debt for a reason because it's senior to everything else. So senior debt gets repaid for before other debtors get repaid. And that is a common form of debt funding that's utilized by quite a few publicly traded companies, other companies out there that have senior type debt instruments. The other debt funding structure I wanted to talk about was revolvers. And revolvers is a little bit different than like a syndicated loan or senior debt. Syndicated loans and senior debt, they go out, they they get a certain amount of funding, they get all that today. Once they close on it, they receive all those funds they pay back interest and principal over a period of time and it's done. Revolvers are different. It's kind of like having an extended line of credit over a period of time. So five years, we'll just make it simple and say it's five years. You have a revolving facility where an organization can either borrow some or all of the amount that they're allowed to per the terms of the agreement. So this revolving line of credit, let's say it's $100 million, well, they can borrow that from time to time. So if, let's say they borrow $50 million today and they repay that back six months later. If they wanted to borrow $100 million, you know, nine months from now, they could borrow $100 million as long as they pay back the $50 million of the $100 million that they have in total facility. So they call it revolving because They can borrow, pay it back, borrow, pay it back, borrow, and pay it back. They do have to pay fees along the way if if they aren't using the facility. So Revolver is kind of a unique play on debt funding, and it's commonly used by quite a few companies. It's something when I was a practitioner, I had a revolving facility that was in place. And, uh, you know, it's just something that you have as part of your typical capital management. So a revolver is is similar to a personal credit card versus a construction loan to put it in a pool or something. That's a great way to look at it. It's 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 like having a credit card except for, you know, a company. Are fees with revolvers higher than other ways of securing debt? Yeah, when you think about this pecking order I was talking about earlier, you know, senior debt, you know, when if you were to just say that everything else was equal. And of course, this is just making some very broad assumptions. Just to give you an idea in terms of costs associated with these different types of facilities, senior debt, in theory, would cost you less than, you know, a revolving facility. And so the revolver is going to have a couple pieces tied to it because it's going to have this unutilized piece or capacity fee that you pay for just having the line of credit there in place. At the point that you borrow the funds, you also have some additional fees that are incurred. So an interest uh, payment that you have to make, 
uh, in addition to the facility fees themselves. So you tack on some additional fees associated with it. And what happens is, is that when it comes to borrowing and uh, the structure, again, if if you're going to be paid before anybody else or something goes wrong, then um, you know you have a little bit more security than somebody else that doesn't have that. You know that doesn't stack up in there. So if you're taking on more risk as a lender, uh, you typically charge higher interest rates or higher fees or something associated to make up for the risk associated with the loan. That hey, you might not get repaid if something goes bad. So fees can can be more depending on the particular structure. And that's assuming, you know, that all things are held constant and the same. If there's higher risk of not getting repaid, then uh, there's a higher cost of capital associated with getting that particular funding. So the cost can't be the only thing you consider, though, right? Otherwise, everyone would always just go for one type of loan or one type of debt. What things should, should people be thinking about when they're looking at these three options? Yeah, so that's that's a that's a great question because when it comes to capital management, you're really kind of looking at a variety of things associated with uh, how you raise capital to fund the organization. Uh, and we've talked about this before on other coffee break sessions. I mean, you think about equity, people might think of you know like stock, stock being equity in a company. So this is. A way to raise capital, you go in the open markets to say you're publicly traded, you go in the open markets, you raise capital through issuance of stock. That's equity. The other side is what we're talking about today, the debt funding. Well, in the event that you go bankrupt and you have to pay back all your debtors, well, common stockholders are at the bottom. Unlike senior debt, they're at the top. So senior debt gets paid first. Who gets paid last? Equity holders. Well, the likelihood of equity holders being paid back is a lot less than senior debt, right? So the cost of capital associated with equity is much higher than the cost of capital associated with senior debt. But when a treasurer is looking at capital management overall, they're looking for a way to leverage the overall return and the cost of capital associated with funding operations for you know, whether it's acquisition or organic growth or otherwise, creating new products, they're looking to minimize the overall weighted average cost of capital. And so they'll do that with a mix of funding structures. And so that comes into play with these funding structures, like we're talking about syndicated loans, senior debt revolvers. Lenders will put what's called on their covenants. And covenants can restrict an organization from doing something or it can require an organization to do something. Some of these structures have these covenants that are associated with the lending facility uh, that they put in place. And so a treasurer's got to take that into consideration. The CFO and the CEO of the company will also think about uh, those pieces as well. So there are some aspects around the structure of the loans themselves that, that, that they engage in uh, that they'll consider as well. So cost of capital, overall capital management, covenants, these things all come into play uh, when you're thinking about how or what you're going to utilize to fund company operations. Are there any other risks that we haven't haven't talked about yet? You know, obviously we talked about the idea that company potentially could fail. The lender might not get back uh, the amount of money that they lent out to the organization in those events. The risks that uh, the lender takes on, they are compensated by the interest that's charged on the funding vehicle. And so that's that's the risk that they're being paid to accept. The borrower also thinks about, you know, what are the risks associated with having all my eggs in one basket in terms of somebody that's lending to me. And so treasurers also think about being able to share, they call it share of wallet, being able to spread the lending that they engage in across more than one counterparty. So they manage the counterparties. So you have to you know, manage the relationships and through the management of the relationships, you consider the risks associated with it. Sometimes 
having these relationships, allow companies to get into markets or sell products or services in places they otherwise might not have access to. You know, when you think of risks, it's kind of both sides, lenders and borrowers. You got to look at it from both perspectives because both sides are taking a certain amount of risk associated with uh, engaging in the debt funding. So if anyone is looking for more information on syndicated loans, senior debt, or revolving debt, do you have any resources that they should be looking at? Great place to go is to your banks. If you don't have regular meetings with your banks, or if you're interested in getting more information, call up your banks. Talk to your bankers. They'll be more than happy to talk to you about these different uh, options. They'll provide you with more than inf- information, not only on the structure, but what's going on out there in the market. So we'll talk about precedent transactions, things that happened before, things that they're hearing out in the market, trends. Uh, they'll tell you kind of an idea of where spreads are at, where interest rates are at, so you can start getting an idea of costs. Banks are really a great resource for you uh, to utilize. So if you want information, go to your bankers. Cool. Well, thank you, Paul, for sharing some information on traditional debt funding structures. You bet. And to our listeners, remember to tune back in every first and third Thursday of the month for a new Coffee Break session. Have a good day. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.